when I was in school um, in the 80s, um, I loved to um, invent and make things and combine everything that I was learning in school, mathematics, uh, physics, chemistry. Uh, the trouble was that um, the teachers couldn't help me and uh, they couldn't even give me good grades because I wanted to play with things. Um, I wasn't that good at school, you may guess. Uh, much later in life, I discovered and realized that actually the education is about that, to learn all things and combine them later. Um, and this is what you're asked to do when you start working later. You have to get the job done by using all the knowledge that uh, we have, uh, especially today uh, in the age of internet. And, um, but this is not something new. Um, centuries ago, when the industrialization started in Europe, uh, people were asked to do uh, new jobs, uh, like screwing um, bolts and nuts in the manufacturing, or filling out form, uh, different forms in uh, accounting companies. So this is how the education, uh, the education as we know it today, was um, created. Um, but as Industry 4.0, the, or the new Industrial Revolution, comes, and it will be around for a while, of course, um, there, there will be new jobs. And what will be all those new jobs? Do we know that? Um, no, we don't know what are the jobs of the future. What we know, or can guess, uh, is uh, what the skills that we will need for those jobs will be. For example, um, we have to be able to combine everything that we've learned in school or in university, mix it together, and create things. So we have to be created, creative. We have to work with robots and machines, with computers. Uh, but also, let's not forget that we have to work with other people. We have to be able to communicate with them, maybe speak other languages, um, maybe speak their languages, or maybe we'll have one language that we all speak. When I was in school, <laughs> the language that we uh, learned was, of course, Bulgarian, my native language, but also Russian. And uh, we had to learn another language like um, English or French or um, German. We can all agree that today the English is one of the most spoken languages on Earth. And um, is that the language of the future? We don't know. Uh, there are so many languages on our planet. Some of them are spoken by millions or billions of people. And some people may argue that Chinese is the language of the future. Others will say maybe Spanish, because it's spoken in many countries. Or maybe something else. What if that other language is computer language? Let's think just for a moment about that. In the future, we will be surrounded by computers, machines, robots. We will work with them together. So we have to know how to give them commands so they will do what we want them to do. We need to know how they think and how they work. And in order to do that, we need to know at least a little about their language. And I'm not talking about writing code like programmers do, but some sort of visual environment where will, you will put different commands so they will do what you want them to do. So, is that really necessary? Just 2,000 years ago, not that long ago, you could live decent life without being able to read and write. That's, that was the reality back then. Actually, being able to read and write was a privilege 2,000 years ago. Will it be the same with computer languages? Will we have to do what people have done in the past uh, 1,000 years, learn how to read and write and become better person, better humans? I think, I believe that people in the future will have to know a little bit more about computers and, the, and their language. We need to know how machines work and how they think. But 
More importantly, how do we do that? How we learn all that? Isn't that too complicated? So a couple of years ago, I created a very small computer board with a tiny microprocessor on it. And in order to get it to work, you, you, first you have to assemble it, making your own computer with soldering iron, literally. Then you have to program that computer, give it commands so it will do various things for you. By doing that, you learn how all the components work. Uh, you learn how the electricity goes from one place to another. And you can start creating programs for that computer, like blinking lights, maybe something a, li a, a little bit more complicated. But this way, you learn how that computer works or how you create an algorithm. So we give all those small computers to a lot of kids, and they started playing with them. They started working on interesting projects, very often things that we have not thought about before like a small alarm that they will put in their rooms, and if their siblings will enter the room, it will go off. It's really funny for them. Um, but they have to solve more complicated problems, like um, noises from the light that comes through windows, so they have to learn new algorithms. And here comes learning more things by doing things. They started learning more mathematics, more physics, even biology and, phys uh, and uh, chemistry. So, how do you program all that? Do you have to be a programmer? Do you have to type in code? Well, it doesn't need to be that complicated. So we created um, a development environment where you will put together small blocks of commands. You will stack them uh, on each other, and that's how you create your uh, application. OK, what kind of commands? What kind of programs? Like, bring me a glass of water? Of course not. That's not a computer command. The commands that you have to give your small computer is um, one of those um, native computer commands, like the language that uh, a microprocessor could speak. That is the machine language. So by doing all that, you suddenly start creating real computer programs. How cool is that? Does everyone need to learn to do that? Well, just uh, 2,000 years ago, people could live decent life without uh, being able to read and write. And of course, today that is not possible. I believe that in the future, people will need to speak at least one computer language. And the future is coming soon, so let's meet in uh, 10 or 50 years and talk again. Thank you.